It's vlogging time, come on, grab your friends, I'm gonna talk about my beer. Also mentioned will be the fact that I moved my furniture, now it's vlogging time. What's up, vloggy pilots? Vloggy Poncho here, and it's Friday night at last. Oh my gosh. This was a pretty long week for me. Oh, I had my big vacation last weekend that went all the way until Tuesday or Monday night, I guess, and uh, I did all my rearranging, and I went back to work, and it's like, as soon as I get back, they, they everything that, uh, basically, as soon as I leave the office, I start falling behind, and then as soon as I get back, I have to catch right up as soon as I return. Well, let's not talk about work. It's the weekend. So, uh, I'm trying something new there with the intro. I thought maybe it would be funny and also kind of like a challenging goal to do a little like jingle to talk about what's going to be in each video. The, the titles are fairly descriptive already, but I thought that would be kind of clever and funny, so I figured I'd, I'd give that a try, see if I can come up with anything at all to say for most of these videos. So uh, as mentioned, uh, I'm going to talk about my beer. I have uh, I've not tried as many beers as a lot of other people I've known. I've never really gone, I've never gone to like one of those uh, pub events where they let you sample like ten different kinds of beer and you buy like a couple of pints of the one you like. I go in Terrapin in Athens, Georgia. They have a deal where you get eight pours. Basically, you get what I think is supposed to be eight quarter pints, and you can get different kinds of each of each pour. But when they pour it, they tend to give you a little more, so you end up getting like about like three or four beers worth out of it for 10 bucks. So it's a good deal and you can try a bunch of different kinds of beer. But until 10 minutes ago, I had never had a Terrapin, which is, a lot of people think that it's just practically a sin that I'm of age and I went to school at the University of Georgia and I never had a Terrapin. And the reason is, right, it says right there on the bottle, although you can't read it, Brewed and Bottled Terrapin Beer Company, Athens, Georgia. Of course, the city where University of Georgia is. It's a Wonderful college town. It's a great. It's a great place to be when you're a student, and it is not at all my home anymore. It's a bit, a bit of a weird feeling, but that doesn't mean that I can't enjoy. I'm like going back between two topics here. There's subtext. That doesn't mean I can't enjoy a good beer from there. I gotta say, if college towns know one thing, it's beer. And colleges, if they know two, if college towns know two things, well, like maybe three. If college towns know some number of things, beer and college are probably included. So this beer is Terrapin, like I said, it's the Hop Secutioner. Uh, it's an India Pale Ale, 7.3% alcohol. I've uh, never really gone into much detail in terms of trying to understand the different components of beer. I know you have some sort of uh, starch, like wheat, or a barley that you use to ferment and that actually makes it alcoholic and that the sugars and the starch get broken down and somehow it becomes alcohol. I'm not a chemistry major. I only know the, like the very basic amounts. But I also know that in beer there's included an ingredient called hops which you always see them pictured as little green balls. They look kind of like like leafy peas. And I've, I've, I've never understood what role they played in the making of beer and I still don't. But I now understand a little more what the role they play in the taste of a beer because I, I strongly suspect that the rather uh, in-your-face flavor of this beer has to be from the hops. I mean, the whole point of this this particular brew is it's a hopsecutioner. Uh, hear ye, hear ye, all hopheads. I guess that's people who really like hops in their beer. All the hopheads shall herewith rejoice. Terrapin hath recruited ye old hopsecutioner to execute the exact hop profile for this killer IPA. It's a pretty strong beer, and the flavor of hops is something that I've never experienced before. They say beer is an acquired taste, and that's definitely true. Uh, but I have a very strange palate, even when it comes to acquired tastes. The first beer I ever liked was Guinness, uh, Guinness Draft, and most Beer drinkers don't even like that. Well, maybe not most, but maybe 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 half of beer drinkers would enjoy that beverage, and not many would pick it as their favorite beer. But it was the first one that I really liked, and it was the beer that got me into all other beers. 
I'd had lighter lagers and things before that, and wheat beers, and I didn't like any of them. I thought they were all terrible. I tried Guinness, and boom, I was hooked. I instantly liked every other kind of beer, too. No idea how that works, but I guess that's what it means when you say it's an acquired taste. Uh, you don't like it, and then you keep trying it until you do like it now. That's weird. I don't know how it happens. But hops is an interesting flavor. I'm going to drink it. I'm trying to describe to you what hops, what it does to the beer. I guess, I guess it's bitter. You definitely get it kind of, you can kind of taste it like on the sides and back of your tongue. And even though that whole story about different parts of your tongue tasting different sensations like sweet and sour and spicy is a totally an urban legend, it's just myth. It's not true at all. Uh, this one, I kind of, I kind of taste it on the sides. It's a little bit bitter, but it's also got some umami, which is uh, the flavor to describe something that's savory, like a steak. And it's one of those, mm, it's one of those flavors that, when you're drinking it, it's it's subtle, and then after you swallow, the aftertaste sort of flourishes, and it's this bitter flourish. You know, it reminds me of Snickers, which is. Not an offensive word. That is from the Pendragon series, a series of books, probably I guess you'd call them teen fantasy. It's about a guy who travels through dimensions. Uh, in one of the dimensions he goes to, they have a beverage that's supposed to, uh, basically that dimension's version of beer. And it's called Snickers. And the way he describes it, if I recall correctly, is it's either sweet with a bitter aftertaste or the other way around. I can't remember now. This starts out with sort of that delicious beer flavor, and then as after you swallow, flourishes into that bitter aftertaste. It's interesting. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. It's a, I, I think I have a strange taste in beers, because I get the feeling that this and Guinness are what most people would consider to be on the rim of flavors for beer. But uh, I guess that's what I like, which is weird, because it's a little bit bitter, and I don't usually like bitter things. When I make coffee, I put so much cream and sugar in, in it, it's practically not even coffee anymore. Uh, I'm one of those guys who gets the froofy uh, whipped cream crap at Starbucks, you know? I'm not a manly drink, but I don't like bitter coffee. Okay, so that's the beer part. Also, I'm going to talk about my furniture. Uh, I'm done moving it, basically. Uh, I decided I was going to leave the envoi on here, which envoi is apparently French for chest of drawers that's also a cabinet. I don't know. I figured I'd leave that in here. I was going to put it in the, the other room, which is now the bedroom, but there just wasn't a convenient place for it. And this room is so big, there's plenty of room for it back there behind me, so I figure I'll leave it. I have over here my couch facing the TV with, with the gray rug running up along the floor. It struck me, it sort of looks like a runway between the couch and the television, which I like. It kind of gives flow to that half of the room. And then over here is basically the desk area. I have my I guess you call it my computer desk with the white table behind it that I described last time. At some point, I'll put in a shot of this whole room so you can get an idea of what I'm trying to describe to you. Uh, and then I made sure to close the closet door and turn off some of the lights. <laughs> uh, and that's about it. I need to move the paintings around because in the other room, I have two of them hanging right next to each other on the wall because there was a TV next to them. Now they look funny because along the wall, there's two paintings and then a lot of empty space. Like they should be like more evenly distributed. But uh, this this was an interesting project for me. Moving furniture around always makes me feel refreshed and new. It gives me this sense that things are different and that things can change. And it's it's a good feeling. It's not the kind of change where you go, oh, I don't know where anything is. It's a kind of change where you go, this is fresh and interesting. I like it. So the next step for this whole process is to bring the new computer in, or rather the old computer. This is my nice machine here, the, the HP that I got back in high, uh, no, in college. The computer that's out in the living room now, still in the boxes, is my dad's old computer, and I'm going to turn it into a Minecraft server. And the next video I make will be the process of me uh, attempting to do that. I don't know exactly how much I'll be able to show of that process, so no promises. But I can at least do the unboxing and the hardware part. That'll be easy. And then when it comes to actually getting the software installed and dual booting, or not dual booting, Clearing the drive and installing Linux, 
and then getting a Minecraft server and forwarding a port and all the steps I'd have to go through. Maybe it's too diverse a process to really be an interesting video, but if I do get the results uh, put together, I'll show you the, the server. I'll make a video on there. My plan actually is to start just doing Minecraft videos while I'm vlogging. Not really a series, just I'll just play Minecraft whenever I feel like it, and then when I vlog, I'll hop on there and just pick up from wherever I was. So you might see me build half of a house, and then like a week later you'll finally get to see the other half of it when it's finished. And it's just things like that. It won't be a, a serious LP, or it won't be an LP at all. It'll just be Minecraft stuff going on while I'm doing my vlog. And I won't, uh, I won't be doing anything too complicated in there, because I think they would distract from the vlogging. And I also don't, I don't really know how this is going to work out. It's still sort of, it's, it's going to have to be like a trial thing for a while, because I'm thinking now, if I went and did anything that was actually difficult and took my memory, took my brain power away from vlogging, it would be bad. Like if I was doing combat or something that was really challenging, uh, I would probably get distracted and it would crap up my, my talking, which is kind of the point of these videos. So maybe you guys have an opinion of whether you'd like to see that sort of thing or not. Like I said, it wouldn't be an LT, it would just be random stuff. Maybe not even interesting stuff, because the vlog is supposed to be the content. Not high second thoughts about the entire thing. Uh, I'll think about it some more. Anyway, I guess that's about it for this episode. Oh man, I am tired, tired, tired. But I do have to remember that I have to go to bed early tonight so I can uh, be rested tomorrow. I have a date. Uh, hopefully that will go well. First date. Uh, and they're always, they're always a little bit nerve-wracking. A first date is sort of like an interview. Because when you meet someone for the first time, this, this is actually even more than like a regular first date. Because on a regular first date, you're like friends for a little while. Like you've seen them before. You know who they are. It's still right it's never right then. When you go on a first date with somebody that you met online, it's sort of like, are they going to be a troll in real life? Or are they going to be who they were when I was talking to them online and texting them and such? I mean, so far my experiences have not been good, to be honest. Uh, people that I've met online have not been the people that they seem to be. Nobody, like was secretly a man or anything, but anything weird like that. It was just, you know, everybody's photos of themselves makes them look a little bit more attractive than they actually are, or in some cases, a lot more attractive than they actually are. Uh, and other people, of course, anything bad about yourself, you just omit. You don't mention that stuff. And so you don't find out about it until it comes up. And it's like, oh, I like all these other things, but that's really bad. Like, I'm, that's a deal breaker, you know, or something like that. Uh, so hopefully the date tomorrow won't come with any surprises. And it'll just be very pleasant when we're meeting for coffee, if you're curious. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make a vlog eventually, so you'll hear whether it went well or not. No, no details, of course, I gotta respect people's privacy. I think I'm going to go and watch Netflix and drink the rest of this beer. Thanks for watching. Tell me what you think about the little song intros. I think that could be fun. And uh, if you have a... If you know... The song was obviously just the adventure, not obviously, but it was the Adventure Time theme with different words. So if you want to write me an intro that were basically the words that would match the Adventure Time theme, I'd be happy to use it as an intro for a video. And then, of course, I would have to talk about whatever the song was about. So this could be an interesting little thing, what do you think? Yeah? Yeah? Write me a song! Write me a song, Boggy Pilots. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.